see here. Again, I'll be in here. Now, tomorrow I will be in here in the morning, okay? Like around 9 a.m. Central, okay? Be here. All right, so Q&A time. We're going to do a Q&A session. Do you at all, 9 to 9.30, you know, give me a minute to wake up and eat. <laughs> so, so when people are like, he's not here, he said 9 a.m. <laughs> I'll try to be here right at 9 a.m. though. Okay, I, I'm going to scroll up and then come back down. Um, I'm going to grab the ones that are right on the screen and I'm going to start scrolling back up. When question is on a hedge, can you have the hedge cost too much, like 40 bucks? If your risk is really low, that's okay. Just understand if it costs, say, $40, Jack, on an ultimate hedge where you combine two spreads, then your other one is going to have to move like 40 ticks. Like I say, you go long. Okay, you have a big, long daily near the market spread. And then you put a short hedge on. Okay? And let's say you have a $10 net risk. So the difference between your buy and your sell on the two instruments, the two contracts. But the hedge has a $40 risk. And what's going to have to happen is the hedge is going to have to go, there you're going long, all the way to the ceiling, and then 40 more ticks before you really start making money at a rapid rate. You'll make a, you'll start making a little bit on the way, but you'll make it really rapidly after that. So you are talking about like a four-point move, like say on NASDAQ, before your $10 risk gets out of the way and you actually start making money. Like above the ceiling of the short contract. And my awesome wife just brought me some food, some lunch. Um, I would say, I mean, you could use either one, but IZSS, I mean, I, I scalp off of it too. It's just it's adding in the order print targets will help you a lot with IZSS. So you're still grabbing the trend. You're not just getting 10 ticks. This whole like idea of like, I'm going to take 10 ticks and a 20 ticks top, very, very, very bad idea. Okay? Um, but but I, I mainly, I mainly look at IZSS. I have C's open on my chart. Just I've traded it so long through every market condition. I'm just, I'm super, you know, I'm very, very comfortable with it. So, especially when you add in order prints for helping you take profits, which is just like a, it's like a whole new world. And get rid of all the numbers that don't mean anything, you know. Um, quick questions on order prints, and then I got to scroll up, and then I got to go. Let's see here, we got. Oh, and I'm going to talk about divergence on here tomorrow, which is a really cool Delta Divergence. It's an awesome signal. So blue is leading volume. It means you got a lot more volume pushing in that direction. Like this doesn't really have a lot of volume. That one has a lot, that one has a lot, that one has a little, and then it turns around. But notice I didn't have any leading volume. I didn't say, hey, it's going to keep going up. It just said, hey, block order, major level, watch out. And then the yellow is the trapped orders. I'll go into that more tomorrow. You can use a trailing stop on a daily spread. Yes, you can. Of course, you should. On anything you trade, you should trail your stops. Binary spreads, futures, forex, stocks, options. Yeah, I'll go into a lot more detail on the prints tomorrow. Just want to get a few good lessons in today. 
So we cut those up so that way you can watch shorter videos or something like a three hour video. Um, Rolling up. I don't keep the broken mini magnets, otherwise I just they'd be all the ways. But I mean, I am making sure I can at least see them. So you may shrink your chart, but you know you see a mini magnet pop up. I mean, sometimes you might want to back and go, "Hey, are there a whole bunch of these happening?" I mean, you can just see them everywhere. That's right where top app. Let's see here. Hold on a second. Can you make sure Felicity's ready? Let's see here. Um, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Let's see, number walks like mine. I should have that, so I think we got that covered. Got that covered. So Titan stops on all the things that I talked about, MVP, predictor, acceleration, momentum, clusters would all be reasons for tightening up stops. Be, be aware of the cluster before the bar closes, but make sure you're watching it. Like, you see that purple pop up and it's time to pay attention. Here, I know there's other questions. I'm trying to find them. Is the hair standing up on the back of my neck? Is order prints included with your $200 month subscription? Yes, it is, right now. And if you're a subscriber before we raise the price, you get grandfathered in and it doesn't go up on you. So we are looking to raise the price sometime this summer. And uh, to be two different things or a combination, like $200 for order prints, $200 for the other tools, and then uh, $300 for both. But if you're already subscribed on an annual, or on a monthly, then as long as you maintain your subscription, it's included and the price doesn't go up. Let's see here. And going in. Different colors on time and cells, um, that is a good Maryland question. Okay, so make sure you ask Maryland about that tomorrow morning. Now that I'm using order prints, I'm really not using time and cells as much as I used to. So please ask Maryland about the time and cells. I would actually recommend you go to NinjaTraderBrokerage.com, okay, and open an account. They will say a thousand dollars, but actually, you put fifty bucks in, you got the account. So, okay. <laughs> but I would go through Ninja. The benefit of going through Ninja is when you decide to go live, okay. If 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 Ninja is your introducing broker on futures and your introducing broker on forex. Then you can get a single broker license for forks and futures. And if you're trading forks, you want futures because just like order prints print here at all, we also use this on forex. But we pull the futures FX data 
to make the order prints. So you need both. Here. All right, here we go. We got a question from Ezra. Here is a hedge TF trade I did today with max of 20 bucks, net profit 55 when I closed the long. That is awesome. And the cool thing about this hedge is not only, let's see, max risk of 20. So, see, so you entered 7.1, Yeah. So, you enter that, and if you were wrong and it went against you, you actually could have made some money too. So, which is pretty cool. So that's a good hedge. That was obviously going in your favor there. So very good job. If you did 10 contracts, you'd make 550, like the size of a, an actual TF. So, so you netted 55 bucks and you closed out. That is awesome. Good job, Ezra. Here. I'm literally just trying to. Jason, you lost 52 pounds since last September. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> if I can lose 50 pounds, man, I would be like right at my goal. I'm trying to lose 60 more. That's my goal. So I'm trying to do it by the end of the year. We'll see if I do. But as long as I'm making progress towards it, then you know I was very happy to go in today and find out I lost five pounds this week. So I didn't do anything special. I just ate right. Yeah, we need a survey question feature. It may have one. I don't know. Let's see here. The trade before you is entered on VAD A divergence. Good. You think trend flip and MVP cross for 50 ticks. Move my stop closer before the inventory news was stopped out. Very good. And I bet there's a good chance that on this right here at settlement I bet on that contract there was probably a block for you but awesome job so 50 ticks that's $500 on a TF future gold contract let's see what are you doing here Sharpie you're going short So this works. Uh, the only issue is you are going to have to hop out, which I'm sure you're aware of, of the trade. Which contract did you choose? The 50 point wide one, and they're all 50 wide. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is when you got in Sharpie, but... This contract right here would have given you more downside. It's actually wider. Would actually given you first the same downside, but a whole lot more money. Look at that, seven hundred thirty-one dollars. The exact same amount of money you have to put up, two sixty-nine. So that would have been a better choice because you have more profit potential if gold just decides to crash. Okay. So I was looking at that right there for you. And then, I mean, even have this one, I mean, you check this out, it's only six ticks away. So if you would have chose like the 1175 to 1225, okay, you're only giving up six ticks in premium, and then you could throw a hedge on top of it if you wanted to, for in case you're wrong on your trade and goes any way. I mean, that six ticks on gold is nothing. Like, that's, that's a second. So I either would have went with this contract for more profit, or I would have went with this contract because I could put up a lot less money. I could put a hedge on. It has twenty-four dollars risk. You could probably put a hedge on. Let's see, what would it be? Twelve twenty-two point six, twelve twenty-three point four. The one you chose right there. So you could put that on for what is it? Twenty-three point four minus twenty-two point six is what point eight? So eight dollar risk 
on the trade. Market only has to move 24 ticks, and you would have had a full hedge versus having to worry about the market going against you and getting out. So good trade. Just check out those other contracts. Because even though, I mean, six ticks is not bad, okay, for gold especially. Let's see here. Grant, what do you got? Can't see everything that was available, but yes, that is a hedge. Again, it doesn't fully cover you, and that's okay. It doesn't have to. You just get out when it gets closer to that. But uh, hopefully it doesn't get closer to that. But there you go. You're getting the idea down. The more you can cover the bottom, the better. So then you literally don't even have a stop. You're just sitting around waiting that hopefully it moves in the next two hours in your direction. Let's see here. Went over that one. Went over that one. These are spread or hedge trades. Right there. Again, good trade. Might have been a better NASDAQ contract. Might not have been. NASDAQ has a lot of uh, volatility on it. So when you take the uh, screenshots and post them, you can post like all the contracts available. So when I'm going back and reviewing and helping you out, I can uh, see if there's maybe a better contract for you. You can have contract, you can use a daily for your hedge. So that's one thing I think is important to know is you can use a daily, but it needs to be a really low proximity, low risk contract. So let's say, like, I, you know, I could have used, like, this is a low risk, low proximity contract that I could have used to go short with the contract over here. So you could use a daily as long as your proximity is low. And the cool thing about that is then you're not worried about it. A lot of times there's too much volatility in the market. Right now the ID is really low, so it's awesome. You can't use the dailies. A lot of times you can't find a good daily that's close, and so that you know has low risk, and so you have to go to an intraday. But if you can get a low risk, close proximity daily, by all means use it for a hedge. Yeah, that's. That's an ideal hedge, and even better if it can go past it. So that is correct, Craig. Good job. That A and E sync entries on both the trades. First trade for ticks, and second for ticks. Second trade, I through scalping the bad A, had more volume on downside, but ended up giving me 20 ticks. So right there, you had a trend. There you go. Hopped in, and hopped in again. So, and you get your stars on there, so you can even use those to trail your stops up, right? That starts right there at the top, trail that stop. So, very good. Good trades, good bad trades. And that's right off the seat chart. Jason, I said, here's what I would be looking for in a long oil trade. Yeah, that's not what you want. Okay, because this doesn't give you much of a hedge for the contract you're choosing. You're choosing probably the widest spread, is my guess. Um, so I would definitely go down to like a contract like this, like the 160. Like, why risk 560? You know, you're probably not going to get, you know, a 40 point move. So why risk that? And if you do, well, then you can hop in another contract. But, uh, I would go down more to this 163 contract that has the low proximity. So I might even choose right here this $46 contract. Only four ticks on oil, that's nothing. That'd be the contract like I'd go along with if I was going long. Okay? And then, you know, that one has a, a, a floor of 46. That has a floor of 4575. You had full coverage. And your risk would have been eight bucks. And you don't have to worry about stop because it has full coverage. Does that make sense? Hopefully you got that, Jason, or you're back. I'm not looking at the bottom of this chart. I'm trying to go up. Um, so you're close. Just, you know, don't worry about four ticks. <laughs> like, if you're going to make it where you can make that really low risk so your hedge can fully cover you or more, and you can have, like, a $10 risk, I mean, you're going to sit there just bored. This, you're still like, okay, if it moves this far, it gets me, i got to hop out. If it fully covers it, you're like, whatever. Mm 
what the most to spend on a hedge to get low proximity? Jack. Um, again, just remember, the higher the risk on the hedge, okay, the more you pay for the hedge, the further the contract has to move in your favor before you make money. That mean you're risking more, okay, because the, the difference is your risk. But before you get past that risk and start making money, it's going to have to move, like on this short, you have to move 67 ticks above 47.25 before you really start making cash, okay? <clears throat> so you may end up going with a lower risk one like this one right here. And that may give you not, not as low of a $10 risk, but 46, like 66, 46, 38. That's a $22 risk. Only have to move 12 ticks above the floor and you start making money. So you're increasing your probability of profit by risking a little bit more not worrying about a stop loss, getting the trail, okay? But, yeah, you don't want that big hole there. That's, that's not what you want. Let's see here. You're going short. You have a double, it's like there's a double short with a little bit of a hedge. Maybe you should click the three of them, I guess. Um, you have a pretty large risk right there, but you'll make start making money very fast if it goes in your direction. So, because it was probably a really cheap contract. Because uh, you're already ab you know, below the floor of that short. So, that's probably further than you want. You're pretty exposed. So, Thomas. I don't see a question. Okay. Going on up. Hey, okay, Jason, that's uh, him plotting magnets. Good job on that. On oil, 30,000 to 50,000. So anything basically above 30,000 is where you're plotting your magnets. Again, you can grab over here and you can grab this side, like click and pull down. And then scroll way out, look at it, and then plot a line, and then you'll know when you're hitting magnet levels. Let's see here. You always want the main spread to be near the market daily spread. The head spread, I mean, I just went over that a lot. Basically, you want the lowest risk as close as you can get to the market. So that way your net is less risk than the near the market spread you're having. And ideally covering all the risk on the main spread for at least a couple hours, if not the daily. Entry at this. Not sure why you entered there when the entry was here. And if you would have traveled with predictor without using order prints, you would have broken even on that trade. If you used order prints, you probably would have made a little bit. Let's see here. That was for Allen. When I saw a post on a video a while back about the NetX scanner setup, but I'm having trouble finding it again. There were specific settings for using proximity and the reward risk ratio, and it was plus five minus five. Just hit near the market and daily. That's all you need to find your main spread chip. Okay? And then turn those off, put them back to all to look at your possibilities. Or, I mean, you can actually put max, you can put all and you put like max risk, you know, 30 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever and see what pops up if you're trying to find a, a lower spread to hedge and then click them and you can see if it covers it or not. There. Got that covered, okay. 
Yes, the VIX is dead. So, but that's really important to use order prints. That'll help you so much more in these lower markets. Trying to do a screenshot, da da da, but my computer not playing nice. Can you see the I zone? Okay, change your I zone to 20 on the number where the number is 2 in the settings. Change it to 20. Use my I zone setup. But yeah, I see like you're long right there. Um, I zone where getting long and on C is getting short. You got PE, different bars. Okay. Now what am I supposed to be doing? Which is why I ask, which is the one to follow? So that's a really good question. Um, if that's confusing you, just follow one. Okay? Or if they're opposing, just stay out of the trade. Would be another way to put it. Okay? All right, let me wrap up my final questions and then I got to I got to head out. Okay, if the hedge bleeds into the directional trade like this right here, that's fantastic. Because if you're wrong, okay, good job, you're profitable in the trade. If you're wrong, then you actually can make some money. So that's awesome. When the hedge actually goes further, then you can make money. That's, that's to me, that's the ideal hedge. A lot of times you don't get that, but if you get that, that just means, hey, if I'm wrong and the trade goes against me, I actually could make some cash. Okay. Four tick bars. Okay, well, I don't ever use four tick bars, Nathan. Not sure why you are. I'm trying to read the times. There, I mean, there'll be a gap when the market closes to when the market opens on the futures. Hmm. See if that happens on like a 312.60 chart on continuum bars. Okay, cool. She already helps you out. Good. Yeah, I've never used VAT A on like that small of a bar. You have to zoom in. So, but like left and right, up and down. Right here. I like that. Look at that. I'm obviously not going to see anything. So I got to zoom. Just grab here, click your left mouse button. Zoom. Like that, stretch it out. Okay, um, gotta wrap it up. I got a horse that, since sort of funny, chiropractor needs to help because his hawks are hurting. So I gotta go meet him and I'm gonna be late. Um, thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate you being here. I hope you learned a lot today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.